Welcome to MFAA On Air. The 2014 Financial Services Convergence Report reveals that more than 30% of credit advisors, financial planners, accountants, risk advisors and para planners intend to integrate financial planning, risk advice, mortgage or debt advice into their business in the next 12 months. MFAA On Air spoke to credit and financial advice industry experts about the three methods credit advisors can use to embrace the holistic approach and what it means for their businesses. I think it's a wonderful idea for credit advisors to introduce a holistic service to their, uh, their customer base, both new and existing. I think for the credit advisor it gives them additional reasons to work closely with their customer through the financial life cycle uh, of their products. Um, and of their, their life and the journey that the customer takes and especially now in an age where customers are more so engaged in their financial affairs than ever before I think it's very important that the customer needs are matched with the expectation of what they'll receive through their, their credit advisor. There are pros and cons when it comes to all three approaches. The key finding is that incorporating a holistic approach into your business can lead to huge gains. So the pros are you're actually meeting the consumer life cycle. You're working with your consumer through the various stages of um, their investments and their long-term potential retirement. Um, the other benefit is you're diversifying your revenue. So it's very important in, in today's world to have multiple uh, revenue streams and income streams, therefore not to be so reliant on, on one model alone. I think it is very important for brokers to have a, a deeper understanding of the people they're networking with and, and their um, process. I think the, the, the pros are is that clients are, are wanting that and they're wanting a more integrated approach of not just mortgage, not just financial planning, really the two together as a strategy. So you do need to be aware of what the planner may have in mind for two years down the track, four years down the track, ten years down the track so that things that you recommend from a credit point of view are consistent with um, the bigger plan. Cons, one of the biggest cons is if you choose not to do it, that's okay, but be aware that a lot of your competitors um, are looking at taking this step and embracing the model of the future. The issue is, is really you're talking about two completely different professions who in their own right take a lot of time and effort to become an expert in. So. Uh, we feel to wear both caps is, is not a good thing. The clients really do demand or deserve that, that expert uh, knowledge. Uh, and I think when it comes to things like ongoing professional development, when it comes to understanding a legislation, uh, understanding of products and specialist advice areas, it's really important that each of those individuals are an expert in their own area. From my understanding of the, the broking side, you have to really have an in-depth understanding of the different products that are available and I think if you start to try and branch out into too many areas, you may sort of lose that, um, that specialist um, appeal that you do have. The role of financial planning brings with it education, training and legal requirements. So what exactly is required to upskill and if you're recruiting, what should you be looking for? An absolute minimum is they need to be RG146 compliant. So you should be looking at recruiting specialists or people within your business that have the qualifications, have the understanding um, of the, the industry, the regulation, the compliance, because it's very, very important. You know, it's more than just offering a financial product to a customer. It needs to be backed up with solid governance and compliance. But I think for an advisor in today's world, it's actually more than just the qualifications. They actually do need to have the ability to be able to explain what the value of advice is to those clients. Uh, and they also need to have the desire to form uh, a longer term, deeper relationship with those clients. It's really important to actually know the process. And so probably the best thing to do is actually sit down with the financial planner if they haven't already done so. Go through the process and find out what their clients are going to experience. You've been watching MFAA On Air.